nothing beats a kitchen smelling full of Mexican food. What I'm talking about is three pounds of ground turkey made with the seasoning of the finest Mexican or taco spices in the world, Ortega. And what are we doing with so much turkey meat, you ask? Well, I'm glad you did ask. Today we're going to cook a different style of Mexican dish that you've ever seen before in your life. It looks really pretty. It tastes awesome. It's wonderful to serve to a big family or a big party even if it's Super Bowl or Cinco de Mayo or you want a Mexican touch to uh, you know a little get together. This will be uh, this will be a good meal to serve to them too. What I'm talking about here is uh, what is famously known as a taco ring, but we are going to call it a Mexican hat. No, not that type of Mexican hat. I'm talking about. Uh, not getting off my head. Do I have to do the entire session with this on my head? No. All right, whatever. She'll float your boat. We're stirring up the taco meat here. And we got three pounds of ground turkey here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, mosey on over here and grab some of these. We have three of them to use. So we have ticking time bombs ready to explode. I'm just, I'm just worried that this is going to bump into something and just break something. But fortunately, that's not going to happen here because you, you want to see Sonic Blue humiliate himself in front of tons and tons of viewers, don't you? Let's yeah. look at the back. I might just have it on backwards. You know what? It's better that way. It is. Yeah, it's more funny. More funny that way? Yeah. Are you sure? The I way it is. <laughs> I think so. Well then. Okay, there we go. It's on the other way. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our dough, and this is just some plain old ordinary croissant roll dough, and croissant rolls are the best at making this dish. Why? Because they are folded into triangular shapes. It's always best to use cooking spray whenever you're working with dough, and that should do it. Now, it's best to use a pizza tray for this, too, because I'll tell you why. What we're doing is we're making a ring, and it's best to already have a layout already planned for you. And what better way to do it than on a pizza tray, which is already round. All you got to do is just put your triangles down. Look at that. That's a long triangle. Look at that triangle. That's a huge triangle. <laughs> Mr. Isosceles over there. Triangles are pre-sorted. Good. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to need some of this meat. So let's get this meat around the main part of your ring, which is inside this triangle. Just kind of spread it along. Take a spoon and just kind of dabble it here and there. 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 Do they make this in Mexico? Well, I'm sure they do. I've never really had this in Mexico, but I'm pretty sure they can make it. Have you been to Mexico? I've never been to Mexico, and I'm probably thankful for that. Now what we're going to do is, the most important thing, we're going to mosey over here and grab our Mexican four cheese. Yep, this is our Mexican four cheese from Kraft. There we go, open it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this finely shredded cheese over the meats. Just like that, like that. You probably make a little mess with the cheese because you really want to get this cheese eat up as much as possible. Okay, que bueno. Now, now we're going to fold over our dough, just like that, just like that, kind of almost like pigs in a blanket. Alright, there's, uh, there's your first part of the ring. Oh man, let go of that. Right, that was a perfect triangle and you ruined it, thanks cheese. Keep on going in the circle. We're going to keep on going and going around and around and around until we've completed the swirl. So just like we've done before with the outer ring, now we're going to make it with the inner ring. Okay, now before, like before we did, fill your meat. And you can do this with ground turkey, ground chicken, ground beef. A lot of people prefer ground beef over anything else, but poultry is actually better for you than red meats. All right, now, same thing as before with the cheese. Cheese, wonderful cheese. 
beautiful cheese. Oh, wait a minute, I'm wearing a Mexican sombrero. I need to sing this in Spanish. Queso, que bonito queso. Que bonito y lindo queso. La me gusta la queso. Ponela mucho la queso aquí en la en tapa de carne. Ponela mucho queso aquí y mucho queso aquí. Que bueno, ok, estamos terminando. Yeah, over over again. <laughs> Gotta find where the top is and start from there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Just keep going around and around. And now we just have this little center part right here. That's okay too. We can do that. Just that little teeny tiny space. We got just enough dough left over to fill the chest. We're gonna do this up as best as we can and use up all the rest of the dough that we got. Mariachi man, mariachi man, let's put a little more meat there, there we go, hey, hey, now, mas de queso, y vamos a ponerle mucha queso aquí, y aquí también, que bueno, que bueno, quien es queso, quien es queso, okay, fold it over, fold it over, and we still got room, look at that, that's the beauty part of this recipe. You know, there's always room for more. So for a size like this, you will need three canisters of croissant dough. Three canisters. And three pounds of ground beef seasoned, or ground turkey, or ground chicken, or whatever you didn't intend to use. Doesn't really matter. And only two cups of Mexican blend cheese or cheddar cheese if you want to use cheddar. I prefer Mexican blend, gives you a variety. And any extra cheese, just kind of top it over where you see the meat exposed. Don't have to really put it back in the bag, do you? You don't want to put it back in the bag. And just kind of fold that over, push it up, push this one up a little bit. Push that one in, push that one in, and now we have enough space for one more triangle and that's just what we're going to fit in there is the one last triangle and this time we're going to do it in our hands so we can complete the ring. Okay, now a little cheese on top of that. It's almost like making pigs in a blanket, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, always hold it over your work so that way the cheese will go right back in your food. Fold that over and we're going to Gently. Okay, this is not easy. Okay, set that gently down there. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. We're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And what we're gonna do when that thing goes ding, we're gonna slide this in for about 10 to 11 minutes for everything to cook up. Now you already cooked up your green, your greens. You've already cooked up your beef or your meats. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let the heat meat heat back up, but we're really planning on just cooking your outer layer of dough. And all of this is gonna kind of meld together into one big happy ring, or in this case a Mexican hat because it's gonna be round like a Mexican hat. It's gonna be, it's gonna have an outer rim like a sombrero and it's going to have a middle part, like the top of your sombrero. So, that is why we call this particular dish, and this method of making it, a Mexican hat. Now, we're not going to be finished when we're done baking it, because we're also going to be adding lettuce, green onion, tomato, sour cream, and you can use guacamole if you want to, you can use sour cream, you can do without a lot of these. And that's the beauty part about working with Mexican food, is you can use any or all or even none of these things. If you want it plain like that, then that's fine too. That's fine eating as well. But nobody is here to tell you how to prepare your Mexican dishes now. They just uh, can't contain a lot of ingredients, let me tell you. And this is going to contain quite a few ingredients myself. Now, since everybody usually has their own tastes, it's best to serve all of your fixings on the side, and that way whoever serves themselves up can put whatever they want on top. And what they do is they take and they cut certain certain sections out of the Mexican hat, and they put the con they, they put the fixings right on top of it. And it always helps to have some extra cheese to sprinkle over the top of that. And that's 
exactly what we're going to do with the rest of the cheese. It's going to go on the top of the cold stuff. So we're going to see how well this dish turns out. And this is the first time I've ever attempted to make a Mexican hat, but we're going to see just how well it turned out. We're going to go ahead and slide this in because we can't wait for that oven to go deep. And we will rejoin you when it is time to pull that greasy fat pig out of the oven and give it our toppings and serve it and do whatever with it that we need to do for the next step. So join us then and we'll show you how to go from there. Can I take this thing off yet? No? Yes, I'm still wearing it. The producer won't let me take it off. <laughs> Wait, I am the producer? Well then why can't I take it off? The prop man says I can't take it off. It's funny that this is the only place in the world where the prop man has any say over the producer. But let's check and see how well we're cooking up. We got our beans cooking up nice. We got some refried beans going along with this. And let's check up on our main course. Just right here. Arriba! And look at this. Mmm. Looks good enough to eat now, doesn't it? Oh. You see some of that cheese got baked on in the top and that just gives it a little more color. But it doesn't really look much like a Mexican hat, not like the one I'm wearing. And I don't suggest putting this on your head either. You want it now, don't you? Yeah, well, but I can wait. This is what we basically call a Mexican hat. It's not quite a ring because look, it's no longer a ring. But if you were just making a ring, then you would just make enough to have like the, the, the middle part of the ring here and then all your fixings will go right there in the center. And then all you have to do is just pull it apart, dip it in, just kind of like nachos, you know? But this is more fulfilling for more people. And if you got more people, it's best to do it this way, make yourself a Mexican hat. And you can actually decorate this to make it look like a sombrero. All you gotta do is take a little bit of food coloring and then decorate all around the side there. Now, we could do that too, but we really don't have the means to do that and not really the time to, because it's going to end up in your stomach anyway, and we're hungry, and we don't really care about design work. All we really care about is scarfing down on this Mexican fiesta. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cut off a piece of this, we're going to serve it up, we're going to do a taste test, so let's go ahead and do that now. Now, since all of the ingredients are going to be distributed differently amongst people, because some certain people don't like certain things, what we're going to do is we're going to serve this up and we're going to try to distribute this evenly amongst the amount of people we have, which is four. And the way you do that is you would cut and serve for however many you have. And you start from the out, outer edge here. And cut, cut. There we go. I'm looking at this big serving slice here. And we're going to take a big spatula and we're going to take a slice out of here like pizza. Okay, and we're going to serve it up like that. And of course, the center part didn't get cut, so I didn't bother to take that long, but I think now I will. Give me that piece. Put that down, put that up. Alright. There's plenty there for four people. So, now you got your starter slice. What we're going to do now, is we're going to have, actually let's have the uh, vegetables on there first. We're going to start with the lettuce, just like that. I'm just going to de decorate the top of it. The lettuce, nice huge handful of tomato here going on. that and of course green onion you can't have Mexican food without plenty of green onion well you we can't have Mexican food without peppers either apparently well yeah but that's that varies I guess green onions can vary too <laughs> At least I can't have Mexican food without my green onion and no Mexican dish would be complete without some dollops of sour cream going on oh, wow, it's pretty it is pretty look at that isn't that pretty they're really putting a lot into that. Yes, indeed. Okay, now I'll get rid of that. Hello Kitty. Put that over there. All right. 
Yeah, it's just lay in the middle of the floor right there. Let me get some beans too, because I don't want to forget the beans. I'm going to take a nice big dollop of beans on the side. Beans, 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 the musical fruits. The more the stuff you eat, the more you toot. The more you toot, the better you feel. So, eat them beans for every meal. Hey. And of course, you really got to add the cheese to the beans, because otherwise it's just beans. It always helps to have lots of cheese on hand. You never know when you're going to need it. You never know when there's going to be a cheese emergency. And of course, before you put the sour cream on, you got to put cheese on the top of your slice here too. Now, I know there's cheese in it, but you can never have too much cheese. There we go. A little bit more on the top there. There we go. Good, good, good. And let me get a spoon for the sour cream. A spoon for the sour cream coming on. Give it a good stir. Slap that sour cream on like that. Give it a few dollops here and there. I love my sour cream. Give it three. Make it look like a snowman. Or buttons on the clown's suit. And of course one for the beans. Oh, I got sour cream on the on the tray, but that's okay. All right, that's sour cream, and of course, if you have it, Ortega taco sauce. But we don't have it, so that's okay. We have like a teeny bit. We have a teeny tiny bit. But that's not much to work with, but salsa also works good too. There you have Mexican hat or Mexican ring or taco ring, however you want to call it. I call it. Needing to go into my mouth. That's what I call it because that's uh, it's making a hungry dude out of me and I need to eat. So let's give this the old taste. I'm going to grab El Forco and El Divo into my comida. Give it a taste test and see how well we came along. Now this is taco meat with cheese wrapped up in a croissant roll. That is very good. Mm. So, if you want something different, but not the same old burritos or tacos, put something like this together. You'll be surprised with what you can come up with. Now can I take this hat off? Only if I say the magic words. Abracadabra, Alagazam, remove this hat as fast as you can. No? Um, Alakazoo, Alakaze, get this hat off me or else I will, or else you will pay. No? Oh, please, please, can I take this thing off of me? That was the magic word. Please. So, there we go. The hat's off, the gloves are off, and now my hunger is on. And I hope your hunger is on too. And enjoy yourself a nice Mexican hat. The traditional way. Is there really a traditional way for a Mexican hat? Who knows? But we just discovered it. I don't know, but you'll make us some really awesome discoveries if you put your mind to it in your own kitchen. So use that time to your advantage and see what you can do to impress not only your guests and your friends and your family, but also yourself. This is Sonic Blue Darkfold for Cooking with Sonic Blue. Enjoy! <laughs> well, at least I don't have to wear that silly hat anymore. Oh man! Oh, I just wanted some food. <laughs> Wait a minute. Just take this off. Why did I have to wear that thing? Get this thing out of here. And now for some really tasty diddles. You got it. Ow, that's hot. Don't touch that. That's hot. <laughs> just came out of the oven. I'm like, what do I expect? Where's my gloves? I don't have my gloves. That's the only thing. Gloves. It's a kitty cat! The perfect ingredient for any Mexican dish. I don't think the cat would want to be a Mexican dish, but if you be bad, then you'll go right into that Mexican hat. No, no, no. Okay. See? Mm. You see that? It's not for you! <laughs> Alright, now. 
once you have separated all your dough, which you try to recognize where the triangle, <laughs> I don't even know where the triangle begins, the triangle ends with this one, I have no idea, okay, I think I see it. Now find where your tops are, that's the top to this one, I can't remember where the top is to this one. Over here? Is this it? Nope, that's the top to that one. Really? Yeah, oh I lost gosh. it. I lost it. Oh my goodness, where did you go? Where the heck did it go? I lost it. There it is. I see it. See it? There it is. Yeah, I lost it in this other one. So try to pull that out as best as we can. Ah! Okay, here we go. There it is. See, I, I found it now. We're going to preheat. Pre -seat. We're going to preheat the oven to 350. Pre-seat. Sit down, oven. You've been working too hard. Ha, ha, ha.